I want to do a pretty cool problem where you're invited to think about someone who jumps into a tunnel that's drilled through the earth. So they tell us first, this is by the way Kleppner and Kalenko problem 315. So we were told about the gravitational force on a body uh, located at a distance r from the center of a uniform mass. Then it tells us that that's due only to the mass lying inside the the spherical shell centered on where you're located. So we'll use that result later, but the problem statement itself is uh, imagine that we drill a hole through the earth and then fall in, and we're invited to study the motion of a person who does this and show that it's simple harmonic motion about the earth's center. And then we'll do some computations about the time to return to the point of departure and compare this to a satellite in low earth orbit. So, uh, so let's jump in. Uh, what does this look like? So if we have our Earth, which uh, looks roughly like this. It'll be spherical, except we'll have drilled a hole through. So here's our hole through the center of the Earth. And the Earth has this radius, which we know, which is RE, I'll write for the radius of the Earth. And then a person is standing at the top, which I'll draw as a point particle, and then this person jumps in and we want to see what happens. So let's say that when the person is this far, for example, let's call that radial distance r that the person is from the center of the Earth. So let's, uh, using, using the result that we're told, uh, let's see, using result about gravity, where the gravitational force on this person is due only to the mass inside the radius less than little r. We can write down Newton's second law on this mass, so the mass, little m, I forgot to mention little m, little m times r double dot, so this is the acceleration in the radial direction. This is equal to the force on this guy, but that's equal to the gravitational force, so minus because it's pointing inward. This guy's mass times I'll leave big parentheses, so this is going to be the mass inside inside the radius little r. Little r. So this is g m m, so we need the big G times one over r squared. So I've written it in a, in a kind of confusing way, but this is just the Newton's law for gravitational attraction. So g m m over r squared. So now we just need to figure out what is the mass inside radius r. Well, if the Earth is a uniform sphere, so the total the total mass is m, for example, big M of the Earth, then the mass inside the radius r will be equal to the whole mass, big M, times the fraction of the Earth, which lies inside radius little r. So the fraction of the volume, so that's like the total, the, the volume inside, the volume of a sphere is four-thirds pi little r cubed. So the fraction inside is this ratio of volumes, which kind of, maybe it's a waste to write this because these factors are going to cancel, but just to explain the logic here, the mass which is inside, maybe I should draw it, so there's this shell here, shell with a dotted line. The mass inside this shell of radius little r is equal to the total mass of the Earth times the fraction of the Earth that lies inside the shell. The fraction of the Earth lying inside the shell is just the volume inside divided by the total volume. The volume of the sphere is four-thirds pi r cubed. So when we divide, these guys cancel, and we're left with, also canceling the m's, r double dot equals minus g m over r squared times, these cancel, and we're left with r cubed over the radius of the earth cubed. And this is, of course, just canceling these factors of r minus g m r over r e cubed. But this is the form of simple harmonic motion, because we recall, recall, maybe I should use something other than pink, maybe I'll use yellow. So recall that 
simple harmonic motion is something like x double dot equals minus omega squared x is simple harmonic motion with frequency frequency omega. So this is of the form of simple harmonic motion where the frequency is omega is square root of this expression here, gm over re cubed, gm over re cubed. So that shows that a person who jumps into a tunnel going through the center of the Earth will oscillate about the center with this frequency, square root of big G, big M over re cubed. And as the last part of the problem, we're asked to compare this to a low Earth satellite. So if instead there were a satellite going around the Earth, so here's the Earth again, and now there's a satellite which is going around the Earth almost at the surface. What is the, what is the amount of time it takes this guy to go around? Well, now we just think about the centripetal force. So centripetal, the centripetal force keeping this guy going in a circle around the Earth is provided by gravity. So this is uh, the gravitational force on this guy, if he has mass little m, is g m big m over r e cubed equals the centripetal force, which is m r e omega squared, where we remember that the centripetal force is mass times r times the frequency squared. So solving for the frequency, we find the same thing. In this case as well, the frequency of the satellite canceling the m's and, uh, and sorry, this should be squared, gmm over r squared. Let me fix that. Ah. got a little overzealous and wrote an r cubed, but it becomes a cubed when we divide by this additional factor of re over here. So then this omega is g m m over re cubed. So we've shown that not only does someone who leaps into a tunnel oscillate about the center of the Earth, but his frequency of oscillation is the same as the frequency of a satellite going around the Earth in low Earth orbit, which you can think of as though the second I jump into the tunnel, if the satellite were passing overhead and going around, it's as though we're projecting at each point. We're projecting when the satellite's here, we project onto the tunnel through the center of the Earth, and that's the point that I would be at. So this is kind of like the same way that a, p a point going around a circle projected onto the axis gives, for example, the cosine of the angle going around. So this is just two ways of thinking of the same problem. But anyway, so we've, we've solved the problem, and uh, thank you for watching.